What's going on everyone? Juicebags here and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2 and another Chaos 1 Mastery Build Guide. Now these are getting jumbled around and going slightly out of order now as Assault on Throne Room has just been very highly requested. So I wanted to go ahead and knock that one out. Especially for the folks out there that this is the last five stars you need. Uh, this is the video for you. Now first off of course our Objectives are base builder, build only tower type defenses. Master strategist, no defenses sold or destroyed. And protect your jewels. Main core takes no damage. Of course, the bulk of this challenge being build only tower type defenses. And this is the part that's thrown most people off quite a bit. However, it's actually not as difficult as it sounds. Now, the first step, of course, is we want to take our favorite tower that is friendly towards the slaughtering of shield gobus. In my case, that's going to be the flamethrower tower. Uh, the ramster also works quite well. Um, however, the flamethrower is definitely going to be my go-to here. And we want to kind of semi-turn this into a pseudo wall, so to speak. So uh, normally I'm rolling with uh, deadly strikes, power transfer, and defense rate for the flamethrower on these mastery challenges. However, we are going to go ahead and swap that out. And I think we're going to need this Deadly Strikes. And I'm going to convert this into a wall using Mass Destruction, Vampiric Empowerment, and Deadly Strikes, of course. Now, in addition to that, I am going to use some Frostbite Towers with Deadly Strikes, Frosty Power, and Powered Frostbite. and I am going to let the objectives fall, so I'm going to throw in a Skyguard Tower, or maybe even two, with Deadly Strikes, Power Transfer, and Defense Crit Strike. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off here with, I think, six Flamethrowers at each of these entrances right here. And uh, we know they're going to start... Yeah, let's just go with them kind of at an angle like this. Five and six. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Six should get it. Now I'm gonna throw just one frostbite directly behind. Same thing over here. And then head on over to this lane. Now uh, this lane of course is not quite as wide, so I'm only gonna go with five. That will work right just at, right at the top of the stairs seems to work well hopefully <laughs> is gonna work out fine I haven't uh, actually tested this build but in theory it should be very sound now on this one I'm actually gonna just put the frostbite over here just to get a little bit better coverage uh, same thing on this side right about there all right now that's gonna leave me a thousand left so there's a couple options I could go with one Skyguard Tower and then maybe add in an Obelisk or whatever to get some buffs. However, just to keep it simple, I'm going to just go ahead and drop a Skyguard Tower right behind each Frosty on the various sides. Uh, might as well just go ahead and throw the DU I have directly into that. And let's just get it moving here. Now you see the uh, Flamethrowers have 93,000 health now uh, with this totem which is going to help out quite a bit as kobolds are still going to run in and blow it up. There's no doubt about that. Uh, of course, using my Nuke Monk build to help me out with all the bosses. And let's just check it out with the shieldies right here. Actually, they died really quick. A little quicker than I expected them to, to be honest. We should have another pack of them rolling in here shortly. These guys coming from this lane. And oh yeah, they're getting wrecked. A couple of shots there from the war bore, but of course, as long as I am lending a hand, that shouldn't be too much of an issue here. Now a lot of people are going to ask about the javelin throwers. Now one important thing to note about the javelin throwers is where they will throw a javelin at your wall and it will pierce your wall and go through and hit the core. 
they are not going to choose the flamethrowers as their initial target. Their target is going to be the core. So until they get in and in range of the core, they're actually not going to throw any javelins at all. So kind of just taking advantage of, uh, you know, the javelin throwers mechanics on how they prioritize their targets. We got uh, quite a nice size push coming through on this lane over here. See how this one fares here. Now, of course, it's not uh, very smart just to stand behind and watch. The best thing you can do, of course, is contribute. I better just go ahead and add in a little assist here. These, of course, are not meant to be done AFK. They're uh, meant to be done with you not only active, but extremely active and paying attention. <laughs> Taking a little bit of damage on them. I, I'm hoping I actually have enough uh, green mana to be able to upgrade every one of those flamethrowers here at the end of wave one. So that that will help things out quite a bit. And we're just about there. Seems to be getting it done. Uh, after a few upgrades, of course, these flamethrowers are just going to be really mean. And there we go. So let's go ahead and, like I said, see if I can get an upgrade into every flamethrower. And of course, that'll give me the free repair on each of them. And getting their help, health up a little bit too. I do want to make sure that these frostbites stay repaired, although I may not upgrade those at all. I want to see how the mana plays out over the course of the run here. And 350 left. It's not enough to do everything. But maybe with what's out here, hopefully I can gather up enough to get an upgrade into every one of them. Let's see, I need another 90. Does that look like 90? Hmm. Oh, so close. So close yet so far away. 15 more mana anywhere? I am not seeing it, so we'll just go ahead and get as many of them as I can. Poor little guy on the end is going to go neglected. And uh, then let's go ahead and get wave two going. Now remember, without having a wall, we are going to have to pay special attention to the bosses. And I didn't, I failed to even look to see what was coming. Um, you know, that's never a good idea, of course. Always check your uh, your little lane tags and see what's coming out. As you know, it's going to help you help you prepare for the lane and the wave that's coming. Go, go ahead and just uh, add on some Chi Blasts and a little bit of uh, Monk DPS action. Let's go ahead and get that last Flamethrower upgraded. Don't want to leave that guy out. And then I'm just going to get my mana built up. That way I've got my nuke ready to go uh, when the boss comes out. Actually, I'm filling up uh, a little faster than I need to be, I think. Now, of course, uh, Pole Smash in this exact setup, yeah, and the Squire Slam, for that matter, will uh, get the Shatter combo on any of these Frozen enemies. So since we are using uh, the, the Freezy Shard for those Frostbites, you will be able to get some Shatter combos going if you choose to play that way. Of course, uh, Double Jump and Pole Smash just leads to lots of fun, so... It, it comes highly recommended from me. <laughs> Definitely getting it done here. No major issues. And all together looking good so far. Now we got a nice big pack coming in over here. And we got Quibs rolling out. Now of course he's on the short lane, so I'm going to try to get him burned down as quick as possible. I failed on the whole mana collecting. Like I said, I was going to uh, make sure to keep an eye on, but there we go. Last, you know, the last 
100,000 health, but whatever, I'll take it. And then our Sky Guard's getting the job done on the flyers here. Very nice. Alright, so now I think, uh, same thing. I'm just going to go more ups into the flamethrowers. Uh, however, I'm not going to have anywhere enough to do them all. So basically I can pick 10 flamethrowers. I'm going to go the front two that seem to be taking the most damage on each lane here. So it doesn't seem like any of these are taking damage, so let's just scatter it in the middle ones. And then that will actually leave me enough to get an upgrade into all the frostbites. Now that's going to increase the slow a little bit. Uh, as we see here, slow to 65%. Let's get that down just a touch. Of course, the more upgrades, the merrier. Let's throw another one there and one right there. We'll save that 63 for repairs. Actually, I don't think there's anywhere else I could have spent it anyway. And we'll get wave three going here. Now the mob counts on this map are really, really high. So you, you want to contribute wherever you can for sure. Um, another thing to be said on this map is for the most part, the mobs do come out in groups. So, uh, you know, there will be a large push out of one lane, then a large push out of another lane. Uh, of course, at the beginning of the map, they just all come rolling out. Those little kobolds will uh, put a curtain on you if you're not careful, so definitely pick those guys out of the pack. And normally, like normally the case for me is I always, always try to target javelin throwers. Um, I definitely changed my philosophy there with this strategy, and I'm focusing more on targeting any of the little kobolds that come. as they're just going to rush right in quicker than the flamethrowers can kill them. And they'll give you a little bit of damage. So not going to be a terrible idea to check and see where the bulk of, bulk of the little splodies, the little splody gobus will be coming from each wave. We're wrecking it up here. And like I said, I apologize for going out of order on these videos. I, I do plan on doing all of them, uh, for Chaos 1 at least. Uh, however, this one is just so heavily requested, I didn't want you guys to have to wait for it. And I know quite a few folks out there are telling me that this is the last five stars they need. So I just thought it was the right thing to do to hop in here and uh, get that done. Uh, mages too. Nothing wrong with uh, targeting the mages, of course. If you see any mages in the back, they're just going to spawn more and more baddies on you, so might as well get those guys handled. Taking care of it here. Uh, Slickelion. A wave 3 Slickelion is never any fun, and we have some flyers coming in. Let's actually focus on the flyers first. I'm going to ignore that other lane, or should I? I left one flyer there. I guess I should help with the flyers here. My sky guards are not exactly beastly in their current form here. But since I'm not dependent on them super heavily, and I've got just a ton of time with Slakelion here, just going to go ahead and take care of business and get him burned out way up the stairs there because we do have to kill him two more times here so we need to make sure we give ourselves plenty of room to get that done so now I'm just going to go through and try to hit as many of the tier two flamethrowers as I can and definitely get upgrades on anything or uh, repairs pardon me on anything else actually I hit way too many of them I think Looks like not going to have enough mana to get everything up to tier 2 here in this wave. Let's just get the one in the middle. That's not taking any damage. Go with the one in the middle here as well. And 141 left. Eh, I'll just throw it in something. There we go. And that leaves me a little bit of repair mana. 
course, uh, Slakelion right out of the gates, so let's get him handled. There we go. And then just back to kind of lane monitoring duty. We see the little yellow dots coming out on the minimap, so keep an eye on those for sure, as that's going to be the little splodies, of course. Oh, I love having an instant cast heal. It just allows you to be just all kinds of careless. Alright, Siege Roller this time. Uh, it will not be a problem because we've got our pet all ready to go. So I'm just going to work on that mage until he comes out far enough to say hello. The mage is still up. Yeah, the mage is still alive. Oh, another mage. Actually, let's just get uh, let's get this roller handled here first, and then we'll take care of that mage. And the flamethrowers all seem to be holding up pretty strong, so looking good here. Another mage here. Definitely do not need any magey difficulties going on. This side's getting in close. Yep, oh, and it looks like there's a mage back there causing some of these problems. Not too bad to take a little damage there. I will have to, you know, their repairs are going to be necessary. And we can repair, can't we? Yeah. Yeah, we can repair on this one, so that's not an issue. But just like you would repair your walls, you don't want your flamethrowers getting chewed apart. So definitely get any repairs on them as need be. Getting the job done here. Very nice. I get that pulse smash going a little bit too frequently. And sometimes I don't have enough mana to do anything else. <laughs> it's so hard not to. It's like we've got a big pack of flyers coming on the other side. Giving them a little assist. Quickly coming from way up top. So he's got to take the long route. got flyer pack flyer pack one just about done I'd like to help with these flyers too just because there are some kobolds in there it's like one of them already took the dive and then quibs is coming close so I should have not have let quibbly get this close but luckily I got a little proc from that frosty on the freeze and quibs was not an issue at all so let's see, wave five now. Let's go ahead and get anything else that's not at tier three, up to tier three. Looking good there. I'm not gonna worry about the Frosties though. Let's see, all of those guys are set. All of these are set as well. I tell you what, I guess I could go one more on the Sky Guard. That's going to leave me 600. Let's just go the front two right there and right there. And just save that last 17 for an emergency repair. And let's get Wave 5 going here. It's like Kellyon's way up the stairs still. Oh, it looks like he wants to go back home. Or no, he turned around. All right, we got a shieldy, and he is coming over this way, it appears. Where is he? Hard to find on the minimap sometimes. 
shieldy right there. He, the, the little shieldy blends in so well, sometimes it's difficult to locate if you're not paying attention. And you guys know I'm not paying attention half the time. Let's see, Ogre and a Siege Roller. I better save a little mana here. The Ogre has got to go quick and first. As he is right there all up on my business here. Gotta stay back far enough because a Stomp will absolutely devastate us here. And then, not enough mana. But I can get it back real quick to take care of this Roller. There we go. Very nice. Now, as you see, we've got some yellow flamethrowers on the minimap from uh, the shield boss. But, actually, no, it's not from the shield boss. It's just from, probably from uh, from, from some cobalts. A little splody splody action. I mean, this side's getting pushed. I guess I should pay attention over here. Always a mage in the mix there. Get a little help in here. And we should have another boss, I believe. And these guys getting wrecked. Minimap looks good. I still have two that are yellow over there. Guess that never hurts to be extra careful. Go ahead and get those repaired up. And then head back over. Looks like we've got a nice little pack coming in here as well. Yeah, they're getting handled pretty decently. Bunch of little mini gobus there. Another group here. And here comes a slick Kellyon, and that should be the last boss of the wave. And he's coming from the long lane, so I got plenty of time to help out with these flyers before I need to worry about him. Just about there. Another pack. And then a little Slakelion action going here. Should be a piece of cake. And there we go. And there is a five-star solo win on Chaos One Temple of the Necrotic. Uh, thank you all very, very much for watching. Uh, click that like button. Please subscribe. And I will be back soon with more Dungeon Defenders 2. You can count on it. Thanks again. We'll see ya.